Hi, my name is Lisa Sharkey. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself just before I tell you really the main story of how how I was delivered from from the gates of hell. And uh, but I want to tell you just from the beginning. Um, I grew up in church. I grew up with both parents in the home. I have three other siblings and we were always at church and I grew up that way, just always at church. I asked Jesus in my heart when I was six years old. And um, uh, as I was going through uh, being in school and stuff, I was very athletic. Um, I got really good grades. I had a really bright future. Something happened to me though when I was six years old. I was in, uh, I was at school and I had some some boys take advantage of me and molest me and stuff while I was at recess on the playground. And that seemed to affect me so much more than I realized. I thought, you know, as a kid, you can just get over it. But when, as an adult, it was kind of like, as I started getting older, I started getting so, not realizing, but I was terrified of men, terrified of men. And I started having like attraction towards women. And because I just, I'm just very, like always been a very loving person and I just always was searching for love. And so I lived, I started living my life, um, finding myself attracted to women. And as I, I went to college, I, uh, I had a heartbreak and I ended up moving to Missouri because I'm from Albuquerque. It was when I moved to Missouri is when I decided that I was never gonna go to church again. Um, I decided that I didn't want anything to do with religion anymore. And I said, Jesus, I'm not turning my back on you. I just hate Christians and I don't want anything to do with church. And I wanna find my, my identity in the world. The homosexuality, being in, that, being in that community whenever I was in it, and I'm speaking for myself, my what, what I went through. It led me to alcohol because I loved going to the bars. At first it was fun and everything, but that's when, that's when the devil, you know, traps me. Um, I just was so, was so ashamed of who I was. And the Christians has made it so much worse on the homosexuality community because, because they would, they would flash signs where you're waiting in line and F-A-G-S, they're going to hell. And you know, just, they were so brutal to us. It just grew, it just grew that the community I was in, they, we hated, I didn't, I hated Christians. I didn't hate God, but I hated Christians because Christians were so judgmental. So it got to where alcohol was just not good enough. Uh, the more I started feeling, the more the guilt I was feeling, the, the alcohol wasn't, was, wasn't strong enough. And um, as I was drinking too, bad things were happening. I have had numerous sexual assaults, being passed out, drunk. So then the more, the, each time I was sexually assaulted, it was like, um, would lead me to drink more and more and more. And then drink, alcohol wasn't enough. And so that's when I ended up starting, I started, started drugs, started pills. Uh, I started like from Xanax, uh, all the, uh, led to cocaine, it led to, to meth. So eventually it led to heroin. So there was one night and it was uh, in, back in March in 2017 and I was with who I thought was, that was my friend, it was a drug buddy. Uh, she was, she was a very bad heroin addict and I, I was just dabbling into it and she, uh, she gave me a, a shot and my arm. It was that night when I like realized the, um, just how heavy I was, just how deep I was, just um, what, a, how dark I was, what a dark place it was that I was in. And it wasn't until I was being, I after she did it, that all of a sudden I was woken up with water splashing on my face. Had, I guess apparently I was on the on the kitchen floor. I, I woke up with her with her throwing water on me, and after the you know she was slapping me, and I woke up and I just remember her like, "You're blue, you're blue," you know, and I was like, "Oh my gosh," you know, and she's like, "You have to get out of here, get out of here," and so I said, 
I said, I need an ambulance. No, you gotta get out of here. So her and her friend tried to, to drag me down the street and I said, I won't go. And I was trying to fight until you call an ambulance, I won't go. And then I made sure that someone was on the phone with the ambulance. And then as they dragged my body down the worst street in Springfield, Missouri, they dumped my body like I was a bag of trash. Then they stripped me of everything that they wanted off of my body. It was then that I cried out and I said, Jesus, help me. And then all of a sudden, like I closed my eyes and it was like the dark, like all of a sudden I closed my eyes, all of a sudden my eyes got like really dark. It just like blacker than anything we've ever seen on earth. All of a sudden I felt like I was just falling and I, I felt a little, I felt like a little bit of a chill, like a little bit of chill. And I don't, I, and I was falling. I felt so fearful. It was so black. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. I am feeling it more. I'm feeling more, more, no, more scared than I've ever felt in my life. I just started falling and falling and falling into like darkness as it, as it started to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And then all of a sudden, like, it was like I landed like a quicksand. All of a sudden my eyes, I felt like my eyes like start adjusting like when you're when you're trying to wake up, except reality felt more real than I've ever, ever felt in my life. So the first thing I did was I looked up and when I looked up, I thought I was looking at a sky, but it was pure, pure darkness pure black. It literally, it literally hurt your senses. It felt like fiery darts, like literally coming in my eyes, fiery darts hitting all my senses, all my pores, every fiber of my being. Like it literally hurt so bad just looking in the darkness. And I was, when I landed, I started looking and I, and I was like, realized I was like in like a pit, like a cave. And it was like, this cave was just fear. That fear instantly was like, no fear I've ever felt before. It was like, there was no presence of God there. My whole life, I, I used to struggle with anxiety and panic attacks. The worst panic attack that I've ever had on earth, I would times it by a billion and it's constant. It's constant, it's constant, constant. The fear is constant. The hopelessness, the hopelessness, the feeling of, oh my gosh, you just, you know, you're never, ever, 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 ever going to get out. You are stuck. Like you are never going to get out. When I started focusing on where I was and I felt like I was about two football fields away and I still felt like an ant to when I looked up and I saw black gates, which looked like they had been like on fire. So they were like a charcoal and they were so, oh, the evil. Oh, the evil, it's so hard to talk about. Talking about this experience is really hard whenever, cause I've, I've, I've struggled with PTSD from it and this is why I'm really speaking about it now and I'm really trying to keep it together. It's really hard to explain it because you you, you don't realize just how, how, how how torturous it, how, I mean, you just, it's just torture. And not having the presence of God, you know, we have the presence of, even if you don't have God in your life, you know, even if you don't even believe in God, at least we have him on earth, you know, you, when it's such, so different when you're, when you're, you know, you're there. It was, it looked like it was just so big and it was decrepit and, and like each, each end, like it would go like that and each end would have spikes. It was like, I didn't have to move my head to look. My soul was so much more sensitive because right now, you know, the, the human canvas is, you know, what's covering our soul. And the thing is, is when I was down there, my soul felt so much more sensitive. And it was from there that um, I looked through, it was like I could, I didn't walk towards the gates. It was, but I could see through the gates. It was like a lake, it was like a lake of fire, but it was like a, it was like a big pit a big, huge pit of, of love like fire. However, it was like, I couldn't see the flames. I just saw the shimmering light because the shimmering light looked as if like the pit was so deep that 
you couldn't see the flames. It was just, I had no idea how, how deep the, how deep it would be. Even if you don't even believe in God, your soul will know. Your, your soul will know that you're, you're in hell. And I, I was in hell. It was then I started looking, I started looking down because I, I was stuck. I thought, I thought I felt like I was in quicksand. So I started looking around and I, I started noticing like, it was like waves of like a, like clay. It was like pink, like a salmon colored clay. I felt like I was in like the core of the earth or something because I felt like I, there was just absolutely no way you could get out. And as, as on top of the fear, on top of the hopelessness, on top of feeling alone, on top of feeling stuck, my mind all of a sudden started replaying, I started replaying my life. I replaying every sin that I have done. You relive it constantly and it's so loud. You relive the feelings, your feelings. And the one that stuck in my mind the most was my mama. <laughs> That's why I call her my mom. She's my mama. And I could, my mama is, a, she's a prayer warrior. And uh, she's been praying for me all these years to get out of this lifestyle and to get out away from drugs. And it was like, when I was in hell, I could hear her, oh, Lisa, I wish you would listen and just come back to Jesus. And that's when all of a sudden, I said, I wish I would have listened. And all of a sudden my body set on fire, my soul set on fire. And um, when my soul set on fire, it was so much hotter. Cause I used to have, I used to have problems like cutting and burning myself because I hate myself. I know like, I know burns and stuff and there is nothing like your soul being on fire. It hurts so bad. Like you're just, it's, it's not, you can't even explain it. You can't even explain it. There is no way to explain the torture. Like I could hear myself screaming in my head. Oh, the thoughts were like, like if you put some headphones on or whatever and you're in your, in your ears and you were to like scream as loud as you can it's like a billion times louder than that is what your thoughts you're 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 alone in your thoughts you're alone in your sins it's replaying over and over on top of fear on top of hopelessness on top of fire hotter than you can ever imagine i don't i wouldn't wish hell on my worst enemy and that's what i'm trying that's the whole reason why i'm trying to tell this the world <laughs> is because there is no truly hell and it's so horrible and I don't want anyone to go if you don't believe in God oh please ask Jesus into your heart and save you if you do know God Oh, repent right now, ask for forgiveness. You never know when you're gonna die. You never know when Jesus is gonna come. You never know. And it was then that it, it got hotter and hotter and hotter. And I, I like, my teeth were just gnashing. They were gnashing and I could feel like my teeth just breaking over and over. And your, your jaw's locked and you're screaming in your mind. There's no water. There's no water. You're, you feel, you feel as if your mouth is dry or your soul's dry. Your soul's so dry. If only I just had a drop of water. If only I just have a drop of water on my tongue, I would feel some kind of relief. It was then that all of a sudden the scre the screaming continued. It's just constant crying, constant misery. You think about it, the time you cry, like the worst pain you've ever felt in your heart, like like emotional pain, you're crying and heaving a billion times worse. When I say a billion times worse, I really mean it's a billion times worse than any negative thing. Every negative thing you've ever felt in your whole life, you will feel it, feel in hell and you will feel it a billion times and you will feel it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. As I was screaming, as I was gnashing my teeth, as I was wishing, you know, the fear, the hope, hopelessness, everything, all of a sudden I was just like, Jesus, 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 help me, Jesus. Jesus, save me. As I cried out to Jesus, immediately I was ripped from those flames and all of a sudden I was in an ambulance, like still felt on fire. And I was screaming in the ambulance. I looked and I saw a, a, a paramedic. Didn't really know where I was at or what was going on. I was very confused, but I saw the kindness in her eyes and realized all of a sudden like, wait a minute, 
I'm not in hell anymore. <laughs> she was like, you, she was like, you're not on fire. She was like, you're not, you're not on fire. And she was like, you're okay, honey. And I was like, please, please, please. I don't want to go back there. Jesus, please don't let me go back there. Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I don't want to go back there. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The look on her face, if, if I could have like, if I could really like, it was like a, like the, her eyes are really big and it was kind of like, she's just staring at me like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if she's ever seen anything like that before, but the reason, the reason why, you know, I've got to tell you, the reason why I am speaking about my testimony is because I am a living, walking, breathing testimony of God's amazing grace, redemption. He has delivered me um, completely of drugs and alcohol for over two years now. After this happened in 2017, I was like, never did heroin again. But it was, I was still shedding off one by one the drugs because I had been on, I was taking so many drugs, each letting down, the Lord was helping me with each drug, putting down each drug. So it was like a, it's like a, you know, it was a transformation. It was like, you know, I feel the Holy Spirit, you know, just, Okay, it's time to put that away. And I'm like, oh, what do you know I want? No, it's time to put it away. Okay, and you love you love Jesus so much for what he did for you that you just um, you just you just want to do whatever you can for him. So you're like, okay, Jesus, I will. <laughs> I have a relationship today with Jesus Christ. You know, I didn't transform overnight after that experience. Um, I had lots of I had a lot of near death experiences and. Um, and the Lord saved me, he saved me from it all. And as far as the, the the Lord has delivered me, like like literally take away all same sex attraction, like desires away since 2017. It was as if he was just, I was shedding off the, the, the old, the old me, like a cocoon and you're, you know, the Lord's, you know, working on me and then you eventually come out like a butterfly. That's, that's how the Lord works. That's how Jesus works. And I've come here not to, not, not to do anything except for glorify the name of Jesus. You're never too far deep. You're never too far deep. I started, I was trying to get off of meth and I was, I was an IV, I was an IV addict of meth and it took me a uh, took me a year I overdose and that was when i was like god was like this is it you don't you stop now or else that's when i was like okay lord i need you to help me and he has you know and just because uh, you know i've got good days i've got bad days nobody's too far gone as long as you have breath and you're in, in you right now you're not watching this just by chance you're watching this either because because the Lord, you know, has guided you to this, either you're living in, in a lifestyle that you don't wanna be in, God delivered me from it. I, I don't have any desires for women at all. To me, they they all are like sisters, you know, it's a sisterly love, it's completely different. At one point I was like, okay, I, I, I don't like women anymore. It's like, it's gross, but I hated men. But the Lord had slowly started healing my heart from all the all the the sexual abuse and molestation, from my hatred towards men. And then it was like slowly I started like my eyes started kind of like, ooh, that guy's cute. Whoa, how, oh my goodness, you know, I'm not used to that. <laughs> so it was kind of like it was it was it's been it's been an amazing journey with Jesus. And if there's any family that are watching this, I just want you to know that if you have any family that are, that are on drugs or, or in, this, in the lifestyle that I've lived at all, that there's there's hope. If if you're praying, if you're a mom, if you're whatever it is, if it, brother, sister, my dad, you're and you're you're and my grandma. Um, I had a praying grandma. All those prayers have worked. All those prayers worked. I mean, it was I was at the gates of hell. I'm able. Over four and a half years, I'm able to. I'm able to finally speak about it. It's kind of hard to go back there once you've been um, d delivered and you don't have that fear anymore because you know when you ask Jesus into your heart and you ask for His forgiveness and you just confess Him Lord in your life. Um, it's it's just that simple, you know. It's just that simple. For God so loved the world that He gave. His only begotten Son, which is Jesus, that whosoever believes in Him 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Just Jesus saves me. Jesus saved me. And I went through literally hell and back to realize how easy that was. That's all I really, that's all I needed to do was say, Jesus save me. Anyone who knows me knows that love being alive. <laughs> I've got the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. I just hope my story um, of what God has done for me will help give you give you hope. And if you're feeling suicidal right now, ask Jesus to save you. I've been there. And if you have a if, if you're a crying mother right now, your prayers are being heard. There's hope. I hope whoever watches this will really see just how good my Jesus is. <laughs> I just praise him and I glorify him. I am not turning back. I have come too far to look back. <laughs> so that that is that is my story and I'll end there. Thank you.